Hi everyone, this is Tom from Inspiration Metalworks and in today's video we're going to look at taking our first cuts on the benchtop CNC Minimo and also uh, go through a little bit of troubleshooting along the way. Alright, welcome back everybody. Uh, if you watched the last week's video we I got the the mill trammed, right? so we're starting to take things a little more seriously now. Uh, the excitement of getting the mill working is is dying down. And we're we're doing the right things. Um, still not all of them, but we're we're making some improvements, right? So we got the mill trammed. We know that it's uh, holding the cutters perpendicular to the work pieces now. Uh, so that's that's going to you know, improve our our quality, um, as well as making sure that we're actually. You know, not cutting on angles when we think we're cutting perpendicular. I uh, so we went ahead and got started. Um, I have a part that I want to make. Um, I knew that I was going to make some mistakes on this this first part, but I wanted to just go ahead and, and get started with it. Uh, so the first thing I did is I started getting it roughed into size. So let's take a look at that uh, at that operation. Um, for a lot of these, I'm going to uh, play it in fast forward and just narrate over top so uh, it keeps it quick for you but I'll, I'll at least give you some feedback on, on what's happening here. Alright so we've got a three quarter inch piece of uh, three by three by three quarter inch uh, 6061 aluminum and I'm using a Lakeshore carbide uh, half inch roughing end mill and uh, you know, just trying to get a feel for how it's going to cut um, I think it does a great job even on this little mill it's able to do a very nice job here if you look closely uh, we're doing some conventional and climb milling and it works out very very well. So the the roughing end mill uh, works great, uh, my goodness. Um, one thing I did make a mistake on with that was uh, when I put in the information into G-Wizard and I was getting things set up, I'm, I had my, you know, I was doing the full three quarter inch length of cut, or depth of cut, so full engagement, uh, axial engagement, but then I didn't notice when I did my, my width of cut. I had had it for a hundred thousandths, and I was actually only taking like ten. You know, I was working my way up ten thousandths at a time, twenty thousandths, thirty thousandths. So the the speed that I was doing was actually way too slow uh, because it was set for a hundred thousandths. Um, I was doing it like uh, five inches a minute. Um, I was just manually jogging, uh, setting it to continuous you know, five inches a minute, um, and it came out really really nicely. I, I did experiments a little bit, and I'm able to go you know, much, much faster. I can do you know, 20, 30 inches a minute with this thing, uh, cutting, depending on the depth of cut and things like that. So even on my little mill, uh, I'm able to get some pretty, uh, pretty good roughing cuts using this particular tool. Um, so I'm very happy to have it, and uh, I will be using this one quite a bit in the future. From there, we... Uh, once I got the, the part close to, uh, to the dimension, because actually what it was, it's 3-inch extruded uh, uh, bar stock, uh, 6061 bar stock. And so uh, one side was very accurately 3 inches, and the other side was just saw cut. So what I was doing with this was I was actually getting it down to a 3x3 three three block. Uh, once I got it close, I switched to a, um, a four-flute high-speed steel uh, end mill, and uh, I did some cleanup cuts on that, just just you know make it look a little nicer. And so let's take a look at uh, how that went. All right, so this is the uh, five sixteenths four flute uh, uh, high speed steel end mill, and uh, going about three thousand RPMs. And I was cutting at twenty inches a minute. I climb milling, and I got a you know very very nice finish on this. I'm, you know, I'm still dialing in my motors and trying to figure out what the right speeds are and accelerations and things like that. But as you can see, when I pointed out, there's reflection in there. It, it's pretty nice. I got a little chatter, but uh, frankly, I'm very, very pleased with uh, the way that the mill was cutting. All right, so now that I have the part um, roughly to size and uh, I've got it you know, the three inch square, uh, the next part was to actually start getting into the, the automated cutting portion of this. And that's the whole purpose, right? You know, it's a CNC mill. We want this to be automated, not uh, hand uh, hand controlled. Although that's the nice part about this is just because I automated this mill doesn't mean I can't still have some uh, hand control, manual control over this. Um, so I expect I'll be doing more of this in the future. But let's shift gears. Uh, what we need to do now is uh, find the zero. So we need to set our work coordinate system for it uh, and find our, our zero point uh, for this so that it matches up with the G code that we've already got. Um, 
nothing terribly complicated here, guys. Just an edge finder and, you know, set my zero. All right, so there's a lot of videos out there that talk about how you set your zero. In this case, um, I knew that my zero, uh, I, I wanted that off of the far left cor uh, corner there. And so I just came in from the side. I know that this is a 200, uh, 200 thousandths uh, um, diameter, so I'd set to, to 100 and negative 100 because I'd be, you know, um, 100 below uh, for the um, for my y uh, value that I'm at here. But you know, pretty straightforward. You guys have seen this before. Now that we have the part ready to go and it's zeroed, and we're, uh, we we load up the G code and we get uh, get ready for this um, to do some cutting. I'd already put the the tool in. I, in this case, I was using a quarter inch high speed steel tool. Um, probably not the right tool for this. It's just what I decided to use this time. Um, I'm only doing a 40,000th depth of cut, and uh, so you know, I, I started the process in here. I don't have, uh, I don't have something like um, a cooling system. Um, you know, I'd love to get one of these Noga or you know, a cool mist systems. And in fact, based on uh, what happened this week, I'll be ordering one probably today. But um, yeah, for the the initial part of this, I thought, okay, well, you know, I'm just worried about keeping chips out of the way. So I just, you know, fired up the air compressor, you know, wearing my, my glasses so I don't have to worry about things. And I just got my little air nozzle and I just kept some, some air going on this. But as you'll see in this next section, that's not always enough. chip weld so I'll bring it back well thankfully it wasn't anything uh, insurmountable um, I knew I was cutting aluminum I knew it's sticky that it's gonna melt at a you know, lower point I knew I wasn't you know, keeping things cool enough hey there's a simple way to get around that right little WD keep it sprayed on there keep the chips cleared off and things will go just fine so let's look at the rest of this cutting operation and into the next cutting operation doing the same thing. I'm going to keep it at a you know, high speed, but uh, we're going to go from, we'll finish this quarter inch uh, outside uh, cut that we do, and then we're going to switch to an eighth inch um, end mill, and we're going to do the roughing interior cut of this uh, this part. Again, it's only a 40 thousandths depth of cut, but, um, you know, again, we're just trying to get to get an idea of how, how the system's working, and, uh, yeah. Things went pretty well, but we also found that uh, I've got some more tuning to do.
So, remember that check I put on Facebook about how long it was going to take to break this? 1 16th end mill? Uh, we'll find out soon. did actually break that end mill. Um, what's nice about it is um, because I did the roughing portion ahead of time with that eighth inch end mill, um, the, uh, the sixteenth end mill didn't have a whole heck of a lot to get into at that point. Uh, later in the cutting it did, um, but as you saw there, I'm cutting a lot of air. So I'm going to do another video on the, um, the cam side of this with uh, Fusion 360, uh, but uh, you know it was cutting a lot of air. The upside was the tool had plenty of time to cool off, I was keeping the chips evacuated, things were working very well. Uh, the downside was it took a long time. I mean, that was that operation, I stopped the camera and uh, I actually never did uh, fire it back up. Um, what I also found though is that I was losing steps in the X direction. So for those of you on the um, YouTube, the, uh, the machining YouTube channel already may have already seen my post on this. Uh, and thank you very much to Brad Martin of Tactical Keychains for the recommendation that actually the problem is in the acceleration settings that I have for the motor, which right now look like a square wave, right? So I need to you know, start tuning that. Uh, so thank you very much, Brad, for, for uh, giving, that, uh, giving me that uh, guidance there. Uh, so that's where we're at today. Um, it'll be a few more days before I get back on this project. I'm actually out of town right now. Uh, but... Uh, um, I will bring everybody back, I'll you know, do a follow-up on this, and I'll probably do another video on tuning the motors, so that those of you who are also building another uh, system like this will have uh, some reference on tuning the motors, because I didn't find a whole lot uh, of useful information out there for me on, on getting the motors tuned. But thanks again, I appreciate you watching, and uh, for those of you who feel like it, there are a couple of little things at the end of the video. So thanks, appreciate it, and I'll see you soon. part and just blew this thing up. Damn it.